working life is spent out here feeding the animals. <laughs> I've got a thousand sheep, but when this flock is fed, I've got my own flock at home that also need feeding. So I've searched for the best locally sourced ingredients for a three quart. The best ingredients, of course, have to be tasty. But in an ideal world, I'd also quite like them to be free, you know, oat for oat and all that. So I'm here today in the woods foraging for edible fungi for my starter, which is going to be a wild mushroom soup. I do forage at home on my farm, but I'm always willing to learn from an expert like Lisa Cutcliffe from Edulous Wild Food, who takes people on foraging expeditions. And it's true what they say, she's a fun gal to be with. What are the golden rules of foraging? The first rule would be, if in doubt, leave it out. Never munch on a hunch. Mushroom foraging can be really dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. You could end up poisoning yourself. So you need to go out with an expert until you are experienced enough to do it safely for yourself. So, the hunt is on. And Lisa's off to a great start with these deceiver mushrooms. I'm looking very closely for mushrooms. I'm not seeing anything. I found something edible over here. Okay, all I can see is leaves. It's these little purple mushrooms, can you see them? I can see them now, you've pointed them out. Oh, they got them? These are the amethyst deceiver. So we found the deceiver. This is their beautifully coloured cousin. So this is why it's great being here with Lisa because I would never have spotted these. I'd have just walked right past them. I'm learning lots as the forager's apprentice as we discover fungi in all shapes. That just looks like a blob to me. <laughs> it's a hedgehog mushroom. And sizes. Lisa is very excited about this one. That's a baby set. They're one of the most gourmet fungi and the most sought after. That one's a bit small to put in our soup, but we can eat it raw. So if you want to have a nibble... That is the most intense mushroom flavour that I have ever had. I could eat a lot of these. But I have to find them first, bearing in mind Lisa's second gold rule. It's important that we also think about the ecosystem. Never take all of it. Leave some for nature. Make sure that you only take what you're going to eat. And then, with a little help from my... Hang on a minute. Fun guy. Do you know what? I think I found a puffball. You have. I've got one here as well. Well, that's edible. It can go in the basket. Despite my success, many mushrooms stayed hidden today. Fortunately, Lisa has a trick on her sleeve. Well, that is a beautiful basket, but it's a lot fuller than it was. Yes. Well, a wise forager who knows they're going to be cooking later will bring some extra forage mushrooms so that we have enough to eat. We've got chanterelles, which are a lovely gourmet mushroom. These are the hedgehog mushrooms, which we found before. We've got bolites here, and this one is a peppery bolete, which will add a lovely kick to your sauce. With our beautiful mushrooms in hand, it's back to the farmhouse kitchen. We've washed them, and we're ready to go. Edith, I need you to start chopping. Is that OK? okay? Yep. This recipe is for four people. That requires about 450 grams of mushrooms. Mushroom soup has a tendency to be what colour? Grey. Grey. Grey soup. We're trying to avoid grey soup. So I'm hoping that with the addition of these beautiful wild fungi, what I'm wanting is something quite... That looks nice. That looks nice. That's fun and pretty. Next, soften a chopped onion and add one grated garlic clove, leaving my sous chef time to finish chopping the mushrooms. If she doesn't stop, what's this one? To ask tricky questions. I have no idea. It's a mushroom. Chop it up and let's get it in the soup. It was really good fun going and foraging for the mushrooms in the woods, but you don't have to. You can get wild mushrooms in the supermarket. When the onions have gone translucent, so it's time to put the mushrooms in. Fry the mushrooms for eight minutes until golden. And now for the secret ingredient, Madeira. But if you prefer not to use alcohol, then you can swap that for balsamic. Just bang it in, experiment a little bit, but it'll just give it a bit of depth. Turn the hob up to evaporate the alcohol and then add 850 millilitres of vegetable stock and some chopped thyme. Bring this up to the boil now, then I'm going to put the lid on and turn the heat right down. How long will it take for it to cook? 20 minutes. Next, blitz in the blender and having returned to the pan, your sous chef should add double cream and their 
fulsome approval. They smell really nice. Time for a homemade ingredient that Lisa the forager swears by. It's porcini powder. And she said, if I add just a little teaspoon of this, it'll just take it to the next level. This is homemade, but you can buy porcini powder in the shop. Well, this is the final finishing touch. It's just a few of the wild mushrooms. I'm just quickly sauteing them, and they're going to go on the top just to make it look really, really pretty. Finally, garnish with roasted hazelnuts and wood salt. That's really nice. That is beautiful. I think you can definitely go into our family feast. The flavour is so intense. That is mushroom soup on a different level.